Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for being here today with me in another session of Ask the Expert. Today, I'm going to answer a question that I actually receive a couple of times from the audience, and I didn't have the chance to properly respond, and is how can I print my research? And I'm talking about uh, mostly our family tree. Uh, my name is Daniel Horowitz, and I'm the genealogy expert at MyHeritage. I'm being dedicated to genealogy since 1986, and I was the teacher and study guide editor of a family history project searching for my roots in Venezuela for 15 years. I am heavily involved lately, actually, in digitization and transcription projects, as well as a board member for the Israel Genealogy Research Association. And since uh, 2006, very happily working at MyHeritage, developing uh, new things, new tools for you, and also giving lectures for the last year has been virtual, but I'm already hearing about those in-person conferences that we all love and uh, want to be. But in the meantime, uh, you may know that this is a hands-on live session, and I'm going to go straight into the MyHeritage website to show you the different options that you have in order to print your genealogy. Let me make sure that we can all see it quite good. Um, okay, and as you also may know, this is a demo tree that I have and I'm landing right in the page where uh, the family tree is um, shown. Now, if you are not sure how I got here, it seemed very simple, I just clicked on the family tree menu right here at the top, and this is my tree. Now, uh, the first tip that I have for you on how can I print my research is actually a very rudimental one, but in many occasions I have actually used it. And so why not share it with you? And if you all looked into your keyboards, for those of you who are in a computer, chances are that in the upper right corner or towards the upper right corner, you will have a key that reads a little bit strange, P-R-T-S-C. That is actually the acronym for print screen. Now, depending on whatever tool you have in your computer, and I'm normally a Windows person, I do know that Mac can do it in a different way. When I click or, or when I hit that print screen uh, button, in my case, you will see that um, in my screen, the mouse just turned into an X and I can move it around and I get kind of a coordinates and I can just select the area. And this is because I have installed in my computer a tool, a free tool that will allow me to do print screens. And then I can decide the area of the screen that I am printing, okay? Uh, once I selected the area, uh, I have in this particular tool, and again, I'm not going to mention any names because it's as easy as look into Google and say print screen tools, and you will have free uh, tools, free softwares over there that you can download and use it without any problem. In my case, uh, I can decide where to open or to save that piece of the image. Normally what I do is I open, even again in Microsoft Paint, which is something that every computer, every Windows computer at least have it. And then you can see that I have the image here and I can play a little bit with the, uh, with the image and I can uh, make the chart a little bit uh, more compact. 
or I can delete different areas of the graphic and it's kind of very easy. And with, with a little bit of, uh, of uh, practice, you will be able to manage these programs very good and very fine. Um, the reason for this is because sometimes, for example, I want to display a family tree that cannot actually do it very good in one shot. For example, let's say that I also want Deborah's father. So I will just simply uh, take my screen capture and I copy to the clipboard, I open it and then I can paste it here. And let's say uh, that I'm gonna paste it right here, which is totally ridiculous, genealogy speaking, but I'm just demonstrating how this works. Now, if you don't have any tool like this, is actually very easy as well, because when you click or you hit that print screen uh, button or, or key in, in your keyboard and you see nothing happens. And of course my mom says, well, but I click it and I click it and I click it and nothing happens. Okay, so what it happens actually, even if you don't have any software, is that the computer took a whole screen capture and saved it on the memory. So what I recommend you to do is just to open, for example, if, if you have paint, go ahead and open paint, but if not, even Word will actually work. And then just do Control V or whatever command you do to paste. I'm pretty sure you all know how to copy and paste. So imagine that that key print screen did already copy and all what you need to do is to paste the image into the Word document and you will see the image uh, immediately pasted right there. So it's very easy and um, again, very inexpensive on how to do that. And you can play with the design and with the people and have uh, all your family tree printed in that way. Now, of course, my heritage has other tools for you to print your research. And I already talked about it in previews uh, as the experts, and I'm pretty sure, and if not, I'm gonna make sure that the recording is also available in the knowledge base. But we dedicated a whole session to the charts and books. And just as a reminder, this is another way how you can print your research and not only in different styles of charts, but also in a family book that you can save and you can have it here and download as a PDF and print it however you want. But let me show you other ways of printing your research. And I'm going to use for that the a fan chart that my heritage has right here. Um, and again, depending on your family tree, this is just a demo tree, uh, whatever you like with. And if you like, remember, we have two ways of uh, doing this. Let me look for uh, a sample family tree, which will have more people and you will see a little bit better this in action. So this is direct ancestors from the main person. And of course that you can click and change the main person for, a, for that uh, purpose. Uh, and I can, for example, view the fan chart for this individual and I'm generating now the ancestors for this person. And I, you can flip here between the uh, names. And if you put the, the mouse on top, you will see the people, or you can have here the names. Now, it doesn't matter which version do you like and prefer, right here in the upper right corner, you have an option that looks like a download. And a download is not only other things that an image that you're generating from this screen. So you don't need to go into the print screen. You just need to click here on the download icon and then you can decide if you want to download the color mode or the text mode. The text mode is this one, 
the color mode is this one. So it will be kind of up to you if you want to reveal the names of the ancestors of the people right here on the print side. Now, the other way that you can print your research is by going into the list view. And this is very practic. If you are going, for example, into a cemetery or into a different place, you're gonna travel and you wanna see, okay, uh, show me all the people that was born or that died in a specific place because I want to search for their tombstones or I want to search records for them. Uh, or you wanna have all kind of, uh, let's say by last names, uh, if you're planning a reunion, okay? And you wanna make sure you don't miss anybody. So this view will allow you to have the list. And once you have the list filter and sorted as you like, all you need to do is come up here to the corner, to the settings wheels. And when you click over there, you will find an option to export this list. And it's going to be listed or, or exported just as you see it here in what it's called a CSV format uh, or Excel, like any Excel and any uh, spreadsheet uh, program, even uh, Google Sheets will open it. And you will be able to take your research in print to wherever you go. Uh, I have found this also very useful whenever I go to the archive um, and for whatever reason, I cannot bring in my computer or any electronics or I, I lost power on my telephone. Uh, in here, if I wanna make sure that the person that I'm searching is, is that one, I ha have at least the basic details of the birth, death and marriage. And I have that list with me every time. So as you can see, there are plenty and many, many ways that you can use in order to print your research, okay? Uh, so there is no excuse. Now I, after all those ways that I'm telling you how to print your tree, I actually have a request for all of you and is to think very, very good before you print. Uh, because um, we should try to take care of the environment. I have no problem with you uh, downloading or generating PDF or, or digital images and sharing with all the world. But when you print it, and sometimes I agree, yes, we need to print and to use paper. Um, and I'm not going to say that it's uh, totally forbidden uh, to use paper. Uh, but the problem is that as soon as you print it, uh, the print is already outdated because somebody either born, died, married, uh, decided to change the name or have any correction. Now, it is very useful to have the printout when I go into a, a party or a reunion and to take notes on that print. But I, again, try most of the times not to have things in print and a in, be conscious about the environment. And I am join, um, inviting you all to be there as well. So uh, now it's time for the announcements. And today I have very good announcements. If you haven't heard yet, uh, first, we just made available totally free immigration and travels records. I don't even know exactly how many millions of records are those. Uh, I didn't have the time also to go and, uh, and again, experience and, and to check that collection uh, because this is fresh, fresh, fresh out of the press. And I was a little bit busy preparing this and other commitments that I have, but I know what I'm going to be doing this weekend. I'm going to be searching my family in this immigration and travel collection, and you have until the 28th for that. But that is not all. So you will need to divide your time between 
immigration travels and the new Austria-Hungarian and Eastern Europe records that we just released also today. Those are 10.7 million records. And yes, I have a lot of family passing through Vienna and from the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And just because it says Roman Catholic indexes, uh, don't miss the opportunity to share you may be surprised if you find your relatives not from that religion still in those records because the church had to record everybody in town in independently of which religion they were. So this is actually an exclusive collection that my heritage has. It worthwhile to spend the time and to check it. And when you actually go into the search engine, you will see down below that those are the latest collections out there. Uh, also this weekend, I'm going to be presenting a D genealogy conference and I don't have an image for that, but uh, you can Google it and you can find it. It's a conference based in um, the UK, but today, of course, all the conferences have come virtual so a uh, wonderful wonderful organization over there the genealogy show uh, is the name uh, so i will suggest you to uh, look for it and to um, experience it then of course if you're still wanting to learn more about uh, my heritage and about genealogy i suggest you to visit the My Heritage Knowledge Base under education.myheritage.com. Uh, we have new material, new videos, and new download resources that are it's going up there. I'm also publishing past recordings from the Ask the Experts as well. And what I did also this week was a very nice webinar not because I did it, but because that's what people said, that it was very nice done uh, in Family Tree webinars, in Legacy. Um, and uh, you know what? Let me share something with you. We actually had a technical catastrophe, I should say, uh, but everything came very good at the end. So I would love to invite you to go there to uh, enjoy the presentation and many more that are available totally free for you in the Family Tree webinars page uh, from my heritage and from all kind of other subjects as well. The invitation as always uh, to be here with me for those of you watching this as a recording or in Facebook, uh, come on, register, be here with us in a Zoom call where I normally open the microphones and I will do that in just one more minute and you can voice your questions and I will do my best to answer after this short explanation of a specific subject. It's just 30 minutes of genealogy every Thursday, 1 p.m. New York time, Eastern time, no matter where in the world you are. And all those URLs are already in the chat and I see already some people commenting in the chat, but I really prefer you to voice your questions. And uh, Virgilio, if you would like uh, not to voice it, I have no problem. Uh, we will try to answer your question. Uh, do you want to voice it? Yes, why not? Hi, how are you? Very good. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> It's a different topic. It's about the DNA kit. I just bought the DNA, a DNA kit for my uncle. The result just arrived. The question is, how can I share those results with him? Okay, uh, let me guess. You activated the kit. That's right. Okay, and uh, did, you, did you assign it to him? Yes, yes, I is, did. And is he invited to your website? No, he's not. Ah, there you got it. So okay. what you need to do is you go to the family tree and, uh -huh. and you see it is related somehow. Uh, mm -hmm. You see what it says here, invite to site. Okay. Okay. So okay. all you need to do is to click there 
to type his email address okay. and that will generate an invitation to the uh, family tree. And okay. by being a member and by having a DNA assigned to him, he will be able to see only his results. Okay, and because you activate it, and that is also the important uh, part here, whoever activates the key also gets to manage and to see the results. So if you want to see your relatives DNA results and to manage, the important key here is to activate the kid. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, my pleasure. Uh, Cindy is writing that she has not been explored the print and charts. Uh, Cindy, I'm not going to dedicate the time now to show you that. I'm sorry for that. Uh, but uh, you can look into the knowledge base, I'm pretty sure. And again, if not, I will make sure that the recording is there because it will take me a good 15 minutes over there. Um, I, I just wondered where it was just on the top search oh. bar here. Very easy. That I can tell you. Right okay, here in the I family tree, prints, charts, and books. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. And then go ahead and play. I will tell you, all what you do over there is free. So no risk a, of, of being charged or doing something wrong over there. I'm a, I'm a paid, paid person. <laughs> you have my money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, not I. <laughs> okay. But you know, somebody needs to pay the bills. What can I say? That's right. That's um, right. Okay, Dave. Thank you. With pleasure. Dave, you have a question. Hello, Daniel. Long time no see. <laughs> uh, th th and like I said, I should know the answer to this question, but I'll ask it for the benefit of myself and everybody else here. I uploaded my family tree out of Family Tree Maker uh, quite a while ago, five years, whoever, 10 years, I don't even remember. There's been almost daily updates to that tree in Family Tree Maker. How do I get the new information to the, to the my hair to my tree in my heritage? Do I delete everything that's there and start fresh? Okay, so that's a question that comes uh, very popular, let's say. Uh, <laughs> so I have good news and bad news. Uh, the good news, yes, you can upload an update for your family tree when you come here into family tree in the menu and you click import Jetcom you will need to export from whatever software or other website you use and have it in JETCOM format, it will go up. Those are the good news. The bad news is that MyHeritage will not merge your import tree with whatever you have. That's what I'm afraid of, yeah. The worst news is, <laughs> <There's more. laughs> uh, well, uh, you can, go here to manage trees and you can delete or you should delete the previous tree and you will notice by the amount of individuals probably and by the last update which one is the old tree but that means that all the matches smart matches and record matches are going to be calculated from scratch mm -hmm. okay so everything that you accepted rejected or did before you will need to go and to do it again. Well, I consider that easier than trying to figure out where the duplicates are. So I wouldn't, that wouldn't, that wouldn't bother me in the least. Definitely, definitely. Uh, but well, and I might even be tempted to wait for Jetcom 7 to get the, the media at the same time and all the rest of the business. But I might do that this weekend and see how, okay. how I fare. Give it a try. I'll let you know. I'll okay. let you know. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Uh, Lisa. Do you have a question here? Lisa, Lisa. Hi, Daniel. How are you? Okay, how about you? Very um, good. I do have a question. I'm doing a lot of research in Mexico and there are like, um, well, long story short, there could be like four different church marriage records, civil records, then you have birth, baptism, death and funeral. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the records are multiple pages. Some are just a paragraph. But I just wondered your thoughts about saving them because I try to crop, not real uh, okay. computer savvy. But, you know, I, I, I originally back in the day started printing. So I have binders of paper. We all have them. 
uh, <laughs> but uh, definitely my first suggestion is uh, to have them digital. Okay? okay. And for that, you can either take a digital camera or a scanner or just even your phone. Okay. Today, the phones have very good cameras with very good resolutions and you should have them in digital in your computer. Once okay. you have them in digital, the way I work, and I have no problem showing to you that very fast. I go to my family tree. I go to the pencil in order to edit the information. And then I click edit more. Once I'm here, I go to the very last option, which is all the facts. And I upload uh, the photo here oh. next to the fact. You see where it says add a photo? Yeah. So if, for example, you will have a birth certificate, I will go here, add a photo, and I will search it in my computer. Um, and I don't know even um, where I have it. OK, so let's see that I have this, OK, which is the image. And I will upload it. OK, and okay. then the picture is going to be attached somehow to the information. Now, once you have done that, I will go to photos and you will find the image right here. And then um, you will not find it. Oh, yeah, you will find it now. OK, uh, good. I thought that it uh, because I uploaded, but I didn't save it. So it didn't save it to the record. So what I do now is I go and I tag the people, okay, that are mentioned in this document. And if you're talking about the birth record, you are talking uh, about the child and the two parents. And uh, sometimes they even mention the parents from the parents. So you will have grandparents over there, depending where the record is. And if I'm recording correctly, Mexico, uh, Virgilio can uh, can tell me if I'm good or not. Uh, there is actually double last names and probably the grandparents' name of the kids right there. Uh, That's so so that, is, that is how I do it, what, how I will recommend you to do it. Another important thing is to tag the document as the source. OK, of the uh, of the fact. And if I try to go back uh, two times, let's see if this is OK. I can add a source citation. OK, and when I add a source, I will be able to go to the source citation part. And here I can add a, a, sort, a photo for the source citation. OK. Um, I don't know if you notice here the difference, because, but here we're talking about uh, a photo for the event and a photo for the source citation. Okay. okay. Uh, if I go here, let's say yes, okay, to the sources. Um, so you see, I have uh, this source, let's say Uncle Tom Jansen, and I can add uh images for that specific source and i can add source citation and etc so that is how i will suggest you to manage with documents okay, okay. thank um, you so much okay i have time for one more quick question if somebody has one question going once <laughs> Question going twice. No, you're going to allow me to leave one minute earlier. OK, mm -hmm. and I see that some people are coming in right now. So I'm very sorry to tell you. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. I'm seeing people that were in and were probably disconnected. Uh, I'm very sorry for uh, latecomers. But the good news is that in the Facebook, um, in my personal Facebook, the recording is posted over there automatically. I will try to process this as soon as possible and have it also in the knowledge base posted uh, anytime soon. In the meantime, thank you, thank you, thank you all for being here uh, with me today. Uh, please take very, very good care of yourself and your family and 
have a lovely weekend and why not dedicate some time to do genealogy. Okay, so hope uh, to see you here next week. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I wrote you a note. <laughs>